Welcome back to Practical Bash and Terminal Skills, part two, writing our first script functions in the set minus E operator. You'll find out what that is in a second. So let's get right into our terminal. Last time we learned about chaining commands, we did something like command one and command two, and we also did something like command one or command two. And I said real life example would be something like test script where you would run tests.sh and then maybe do a git push. So what is tests.sh? Let's build such a simple test script. So use the editor of your choice. For me, obviously, that is vim and uh, open up this file. So any bash script has to start with this uh, line indicating how to interpret this file with the um, shebang. And um, the simplest way is to do to refer to bin bash. There's always some debate like whether that's the best way or not. You can also do user bin environment bash. So this one is a bit more compatible if um, you don't have a guarantee that your bash variable is located at this path. So if this runs into failures, you can use this one. Um, so maybe in the environment of uh, containers that you don't know exactly, this might be uh, better. But for me, I'm just keeping this simple one here because I know that it works. So let's write a very simple script that runs our test suite. So this test suite would probably start with something like unit tests. Then it would maybe run integration tests. And in the end, it would run end to end tests. Cool. So in real life, these would, of course, be specific commands from your uh, depending on what language you're, you're working with. In Node, this would be maybe npm run unit tests in Maven, you would have specific commands in Go, this would be Go tests and so on. Um, since we don't have any of those here, we basically want to replace them with a very simple mock. And for this, we can use a function. We'll get into more detail about functions in the next video. But for now, just trust me that a function can be run like a command and that a function can return an exit code. So we have unit tests here that return zero. Remember from the last video, zero is good. Zero means success. So then we also need the function for the integration test will also return zero. And we need the function for the end to end tests, which will also return zero for now. Cool. So let us try to run this script. So I told you before already, or you, you might have seen it already that we run these scripts with dollar slash meaning run this from the current directory. And let's see what happens. Permission denied. Okay, what does that mean? So if we do an ls with uh, the list option, we see our script here. And the, the first sort of cryptic thing that you see here are the permissions on this file. So we see an R that stands for read, we see an X, uh, sorry, we see a W that stands for write, and a couple of dashes, which basically mean missing permissions. So the permission that we want to have to be able to execute this script is the executable permission. For this, we can use ch mod or change mode, I think that's what it stands for, plus x, meaning add the executable permission to our script, which was called tests.sh. Cool, so let's run the ls command again. And now we see that we have the x there as well. So let's try it again. Cool, it seems to have worked. We can check, as you learned in the previous code, we can check the exit code. Let's make this a bit nicer. Let's maybe say something like running unit tests. And then here we would say running integration tests. And down here we would say running end-to-end -end tests. And let's run it again. Cool, so this is a bit nicer output. So now we can use this and run it in combination with git push. I don't actually have a git repository here. I'll just echo git push instead. But you would, of course, use git push in a real life scenario. So now we would run all three of them. Cool. Let's get into our test script again. And let's maybe make the unit tests fail. So we're returning exit code one on the unit test. And let's see what happens again. Huh, we're still getting to our git push step. So even though the unit tests failed, our script continued. So how can we fix that? One way to fix it was what we already learned in the uh, previous uh, to, uh, in the previous video. We can chain this with the end operator. Okay, let's see what happens. 
cool, running unit tests, and then our script ends. And we can, of course, verify the exit code. There it is. It is one, but the important thing is we never got to our git push step. So this is not the prettiest way though. So if we go back into our script, this is a bit cumbersome. And of course this won't scale at all. So what we can do instead is go to the beginning of our script. Actually, it doesn't have to be the beginning. It just have to be before we run the commands that we want to run this on. And we can set the set minus E option. So minus E means exit this script on an error. So let's see if this works. Let's run again test.sh and echo git push. Cool, we're exiting at our unit test step. So if there's minus E, um, there's also plus E. So let's say for whatever reason, we want to ignore the failure of our unit test. Don't ever do that in real life. But just for the sake of our bash tutorial here. So what we're saying now is before we run the unit test, we're setting plus E, meaning we're ignoring these uh, errors. Then we're running the unit test and then we're getting back to minus E. So now we want to exit again. So to prove that, let's make our end to end test fail this time. And what we should be seeing now is that the unit tests are running, they're failing, but we don't care. The integration tests are running, they're fine. And the end to end tests are running and they are failing, but now we do care because we're at minus E again. So let's see what our test script does. Exactly what we just said. We see running the unit tests, running the integration tests and running the end to end tests. So, so let's go back to our test script and remove this again. Not that it matters, but never want to skip unit tests. Cool. So this was part two. We introduced a couple of different concepts. First of all, what do you have to do to run a script rather than run everything in line? We had to modify the permissions of that script using the change mode command or ch mod. Then we learned about minus E and if there's minus E, there's also plus E. And also we touched upon functions a bit and functions will be the main topic of the next video. See you then.